Manga girl almost always sit alone at at school. I don't know if that's because she doesn't have friends, or because she wants to sit alone. I'm so glad I got I've got Autumn to sit with, and Autumn is never sick, so I never have to eat alone. Mom says there's nothing wrong with eating alone or going to the movies alone. She says that we have to be happy spending time with ourselves. Because the most important person in the world, who should like you, is yourself. I like myself, but I still don't like eating alone. I secretly call her Mangda Girl because she wears these hats with ears, like cat's ears or fox ears. Sometimes there's a cape attached to the hat. When the when she runs, she puts her hands, her arms behind her. And says whoosh, I'm not making that up. Whoosh, like she's in a cartoon. I asked her once, "How come you say whoosh when you run?" You know what she said? She said that if I had to ask that question, then I didn't know anything about manga. I know a little about manga, but I'm not a fan. It feels weird to read. Read a book backward. I have enough trouble reading them forward. I have never asked her why she wears the hat because, well, I think the answer might be kind of creepy. Jeremy Bishop told me that she's hiding a deformed ear, and someone else started a rumor that she has horns. No one really knows what's wrong with her head. But it must be bad because she never takes off the ear that hat. After she'd been at our school for a week, I started to feel sorry for her. So I invited her to sit with me in autumn at lunch. She said she wanted to draw instead. Mangda Girl always sit in the corner, and she draws all the time. Our teacher, Mister Pine, tells her to put away her sketchbook, but she. But as soon as we have free time or reading time, she starts drawing again. She draws during lunch and at break, but she never lets anyone see what she's drawing. I've tried lots of times, but she always covers the page. I think that's why she chooses corners, because no one can sneak up and see. Her real name is Tanisha Washington. Tanisha isn't in my name book. So I looked it up online and found a bunch of different definitions, but a few places agree that Tanisha is an African name that means one who is born on Monday. A lot of people don't like Mondays because it means the weekend is over, but the day I don't like is Thursday because that's the day I have to leave class at eleven thirty to go to reading lab. According to my Test results. I'm reading below grade level. The first day I, I had to go. Mr. Pine stopped, right in the middle of his lessons on Washington State history. Looked at the clock and said, "Leilani and Stewart, it's time for you to go to reading lab." I know. I said, "Great, gritting my, grinding my teeth." Why did he have to announce it? To make matters worse, Haley Ransom and Haley McDonald are also in Mr. Pine's class. They sit side by side in the front row. Other than Autumn, they get the best grades in class. I know this because whenever we get homework back, I have a perfect view from the fourth row of the red A's on their papers. I don't want to give them any reason to think I'm not smart enough to be in their group. So I make sure to watch the clock and jump out of my chair a minute before I'm supposed to leave for reading lab, so that Mister Pine won't make another announcement. Then I hurry towards the door, avoiding the front row so Haley and Haley won't notice me leaving. But today I get distracted because I'm trying to figure out what my sleepover invitation will look like. Should they be shaped like the state of Hawaii, or like a hula girl, or maybe a pineapple? Leilani, Mister 
Pine calls from his desk. It's time to. I drop my pen. No, 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 no. Don't say it. Go to the reading. Go to reading lab. Oh, I grunt. Stewart's already left. Autumn smiles at me and waves goodbye. As I grab my folder, Mangardo looks up and from her drawing. Why is she staring at me? Haley and Haley turn and watch me leave. This is not how I want to be noticed. When I get back from the reading lab, everyone is heading for the cafeteria. How did it go? Autumn asks as she pulls her Tupperware box out of her backpack. The usual, I say with a shrug. The usual is sitting with Stewart, working on vocab cards. I glance over at Mangardo. She's still sitting at her corner desk, huddled over her drawing. She looks at me, her eyes squinty beneath her brim of her head cap. She draws, then she looks at me again. Then she draws some more, then she looks at me. Wait a, a minute, is she drawing me? I need to see that drawing, but I have to be sneaky. If I start the whole show boat, if she touches me looking, she crumple the paper, then rather she'd rather eat her drawing than let me see it. I pretend I need to wash my hands at the sink and then I lunge sideways. And I see it. She's drawn a cartoon of a girl who has long black hair like mine. The girl is being attacked by gigantic letters. A, B, and C. That's mean, I say. It's not mean. It is. You're making fun of me. It's not done. She grumbles. The, then she shoves the paper into her backpack and rushes out of the room. What was that? Autumn asked. I tell her what I saw. I'm sure it wasn't you. Of course it was me. She was totally making fun of me going to reading lab. But why would she do that? Autumn asked as we started down the hall. Reading is all about wiring, not intelligence. A lot of famous people had trouble reading when they were young. Thomas Edison and Walt Disney both had dyslexia. The, and Einstein didn't get good grades and George Washington couldn't spell at all. Autumn have, could have told me that all those people had also gone to reading lab, but it wouldn't have made me feel any but better. The cartoon really stung. When I got home, I add another name to the list. Do not invite to my sleepover. Number one, William, the rude boy from the third floor. Number two, Todd Bro, no matter what mom says. And number three, Tanisha Washington, the manga girl.